Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to another Doctor Who product review. In today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at one of the latest releases as a part of the Robert Harrop limited edition hand-painted statue series. In today's review, the Yeti from the second Doctor serial, The Abominable Snowman. This statue was originally released on the Robert Harrop official website with a recommended retail of £90. However, as always with this series, it is limited edition, in particular for this release, to 225 units, meaning that this release has indeed now sold out. I do believe it in fact sold out within 24 hours of release. Therefore, as always with this range, if there is a particular statue that grabs your interest, I definitely recommend purchasing it as soon as possible when it is available to do so so in order to avoid disappointment. Therefore, your only chance to get this statue now is most likely from third-party retailers, the likes of eBay. However, please do note, of course, the Second Doctor stories are from the black and white era of Doctor Who, and if Robert Harrop do in keep with their usual style for this series, there may possibly be a black and white variation of this Yeti statue released at some point in the future. However, from what you understand, this hasn't yet been confirmed. So starting off to state the obvious, the packaging for this Robert Harrop statue is a stark change to the previous releases in the range. This is partly due to the statue's size and pose. Although not as pretty nor stylish as some of the previous boxes, the main thing is it keeps the statue safe. The usual packaging details are presented through the use of stickers on the side of the lid. This includes the title of the product as well as the era dates, as well as stating that this is the 43rd figure within the series, limited edition to 225 units, which is a slightly bigger production run compared to some of the previous releases. At the top we have the inclusion of a large sticker which replicates the style guide of the usual box, alongside the unique statue identification number but being Unit 19. The box is made of strong corrugated cardboard encapsulating the statue well. Opening up the box, we are greeted by a prison of protective foam, which takes up the vast majority of the box, with the statue in the centre. The certificate is printed in the usual style guide, featuring a handwritten number on the front and a picture colourised towards the bottom. On the opposite side, there is a little story synopsis for the Second Doctor serial, accompanied by a quote. The Yeti comes packaged in a clear bag to protect from dust. So here we have the statue in all of its glory, and I absolutely love it. I was instantly taken by this statue upon announcement, partly because I have a rather unusual love for the Yeti stories, but also because he can sit alongside the Web of Fear variant on display, a statue that I already own. Although both of the statues are big lumbering furballs, they in fact have a lot of differences between them. The pose of this statue reminds me of the Target Novelization cover art by Andrew Skilleter, as well as the Demon Music Group final record artwork. The arms are fiercely raised, giving the statue a great presence. The claws and feet are both sculpted in a similar manner, with a black base and a lighter grey wash on the top, drawing lots of attention to the wrinkles and the dirty yellow claws at the end. The feet are considerably large and webbed, giving the large body lots of support. The design is an interesting blend with a natural animalistic style, but also a little bit of robotics in there as well. The rest of the body is fur, and lots of it as you can see. I can't exactly compare this statue side by side to the Web of Fear variant due to me not currently living at Horsty HQ, but the Web variant is much smoother and controlled, as well as being a rather solid shade of brown. For this version, Harrop have done a superb job replicating the texture being a lovely messy design, with lots of levels to it, almost looking windswept and rough after walking around the Himalayas and the Detsen Monastery. If you're a fan of statues with lots of varied details, such as Cybermen with varying components and toggles, this statue may not be for you. Although with lots of detail, it's simply lots of hair, and that may not be for everyone. As for the central body, this contains lots of strands of hair funneling out into waves, almost creating a plumage effect towards the lower level of the torso, being much larger than the top of the head. In the centre, the fur bulges out 
backwards, once more supported by a grit paint application, using darker shades of black and grey. The rest of the body contains similar details. As we turn to the back, each part of the spine is split into various sections. I really love the way that the fur occasionally comes to a point, making it look very natural and rugged. At first glance, some of the sections of the fur do look like they're made up of large block sections of colour. However, actually, if you look closer, there's lots of various different shades of browns and cream, really adding to that textured design. The lower half of the body features more brown colouring, with lighter application towards the top of the head. The darker paint application under the arms and the fluffy stomach also do a great job of providing the illusion of shading on natural weather and mud. The arms contain the same furry design to the rest of the body, and the legs gradually reduce in size, leading to the feet at the bottom. The fur is nicely split into layers, which especially looks good as it overhangs from the belly. I can almost imagine the second doctor disassembling the yeti, revealing the robotics underneath. The overall body of the statue is considerably large, and as a result, the statue is very weighty. As always with this series, it feels like a great quality product. The head features a few more intricate details, including a mask of darker black fur, picked out with a shock of grey paint. This stands out beautifully while surrounded by the lighter paint application surrounding the rest of the fur on the head. In the centre, we have the inclusion of the eyes, which have been sunken into the Fur. These have been painted with a glossy black finish, and stand out a lot from the rest of the head, complete with the claws raised and the glaring eyes, he's ready to threaten Detzen. The Yeti also comes packaged with a control sphere. This is merely a metal reflective orb with nothing more to it. This can sit on the statue's base between the rocky terrain. It's a great yet simple inclusion to sit alongside the statue when on display. And if you have a surface that is ever so slightly at an angle, of course you can ominously make it hover about, very much like how it does do within the serial. It's little touches like this that Robert Harrop don't necessarily need to include, however it is really nice that they have, especially considering that the previous Yeti release had the inclusion of the gun, and of course this Yeti doesn't have a gun accessory. As for the base, as per, this features a specially sculpted design. The Web of Fear variant featured the old cobbled streets of London. This statue, however, includes rocks and pebbles, mimicking the mountainous landscape seen within the story. Various shades have been used, making the rocks look natural and realistic, and as always, complements the statue above superbly. The base includes the standard white trim and the Harrop sticker on the bottom, stating the unit number, which has been handwritten on. The base also contains the same material on the surface in order to prevent it sliding when on display. Everything about this statue is simply perfect. Alongside the Special Weapons Dalek and the 10th Planet Cyberman, it might in fact be my favourite from the range so far. The varied design between the two Second Doctor Yeti serials also justifies a double dip getting a second Yeti if you have the original version. This statue will look absolutely brilliant alongside the other Yeti variation, as well as the previously released Second Doctor statue, which I have already reviewed. Viewed. So in summary, for the Doctor Who Robert Harrop limited edition hand-painted figurine of the Yeti from the second Doctor serial, The Abominable Snowman, I absolutely love this release. As always with Robert Harrop, you can really rely on them to create a high-quality representation of Doctor Who monsters from the classic series, and this is without a doubt one of the highlights within my Harrop collection to date. I think that in particular, if you've got the previous Yeti release, this one has a lot of differences to justify a second purchase, but equally if you don't have that original version, this will make an absolutely brilliant addition to your collection, especially if you like the Abominable Snowman and the Web of Fear, or the Second Doctor era as a whole. Personally, I have a really strong interest for these Doctor Who stories. I in fact reviewed the Web of Fear vinyl a number of months ago, and I really did enjoy listening to that episode, then reading the Target novelization, and I'm really looking forward forward to hopefully one day seeing that serial get an animation treatment because I think the Yetis are a really intriguing villain and it has been nicely realised within this statue release. 
So, as always, from Robert Harrop, a great quality statue with a lot of beautiful paint application, and I highly recommend purchasing it if you get the chance to do so. So, thank you very much for watching this review. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Do stay tuned on the Horse Productions for regular Doctor Who content from product reviews, big finish reviews, and much, much more. On that note, have a nice day, and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.